Uh, oh, weird. It doesn't. We. I feel like we haven't gone over, or I should say, you haven't gone over the way the basic flow of a match is. I feel like true. True. Fair enough. <laughs> you know. I mean, maybe, I. I, I I don't know what order the notes situation are in, but you know, I, I honestly, I just didn't think to put that part in, but I'm, I'm literally on the page right now, so I can just read it off. Of it. Like, I mean, the, the flow, way the general uh, flow of play works is, and, and just uh, how, how like the basic resolution of mechanics, not necessarily all the nitty gritty. No, no, of course not. Um, the way a typical game works is at the beginning, you know, at the beginning of the game, you assuming you've chosen your units, you've given them all the stuff they want or stuff you need. Or actually, you know, what, before that, the game talks about the point system, right? We've, I've said that you, you have to literally buy the weapons and gear that you use on each of your mobile suits based on a point amount. Yes. In 40K, there is a specific number that you hit. Typically, tournament standard is 2,000 points. This game does not have a point cap. This is... Which is... For, for, co- for people listening context, the 2,000 points is a budget. Yes. Units yes, are so you worth basically a certain say if, point value, and you have a budget of yeah. 2,000. So if you're playing 40K, if you want, let's say a squad of Space Marines is 100 points and a tank is 200 points. So if you have 2,000, you can do, you know, 10 squads of Space Marines and five tanks, and that'll equal 2,000 points. This game does not work off that system. You just basically make a handshake agreement to go, well, I want to, you know, I want to use mobile suits that equal out to this amount so you can pick stuff equal to that amount as well. Uh, but okay. Yeah, I don't like that for balance reasons because you know if you're if you're running the all gym squad, let's say gyms are super cheap to field. Right. Uh, like if the RX, I believe the RX seventy eight is two hundred and seventy points total to field. If a gym is ninety, well, you can field three of those for one RX. And gotcha. if you go, oh well, I want to do if you're if you're gonna run. 60 gyms, which you could do, and that'd be a couple hundred dollars, but you could do it. <laughs> it, it just gets a little goofy, you know? Yeah. yeah. But yes, you, you decide on a point amount. You build your armies by picking out your gear, your abilities, so on and so forth. Uh, once the game begins, the players make something called the priority roll, which basically just decides who goes first. Initiative. Uh, the way, yes, it's initiative. The way that a turn works is that at the start of the turn, you make your initial upkeep. This is your command phase. Pretty much whenever, if you want to deploy a unit or have one uh, uh, retreat, if you want to spend your command points and issue your orders, if you want to affect the, the field of battle in a way that isn't one of your units shooting at it, that is this phase. Um, anyone who plays magic, it's your... Uh, I was just, I was... I was literally just thinking, as someone who hasn't played any war games, you describing this, I'm putting this mentally in my head through the lens of TCGs. Yeah. What is what is the initial start phase? I think I believe it's just called your start phase, right? Magic? In Magic? Oh, man. Uh, I don't remember. I know in Yu-Gi-Oh, you go draw phase, standby phase. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. It'd be like your draw phase, standby phase in Yu-Gi-Oh. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, after that, it goes to your, uh, action phase. And this is where a lot of the actual turn takes place. In this phase, this is where your mobile suits will move, where they will attack, where they will duck for cover, all that stuff. Uh, where they will, will route if they fail morale checks, which, uh, if mobile suits take a certain amount of damage, their pilot will undergo a certain amount of mental strain. They might just peace out. They'll just leave. Uh, or they'll try to retreat, kind of like the frightened condition in D&D, right? You can't, you can't advance, you can only retreat, and you have disadvantage to hurt people, or hurt people to hit people, I don't know why I said it like that. Uh, it's like that. Uh, it doesn't specifically call it out, but they do sort of treat it like 40k, where there is a part of the game where you shoot, and a part of the game where you punch. And the idea basically being is that you will fire and approach the enemy mobile suit and then get into close quarters combat. Yeah, that's what your suit specializes in. Resolve range combat first. Yes. And then you'll go into close combat. And then finally, you will go into your final upkeep, which is if any units have been destroyed, if any of them have routed to the point where they leave the battle, uh, if, you know, 
terrain has been destroyed, stuff like that is all resolved in the final upkeep phase. It's also where victory conditions are um, applied. So if you, for example, if a game only goes three rounds and we're at the bottom of round three and you control two objectives and they control zero, you have two victory points at this phase only. There is, there's a cool little diagram they give you where it says game start, priority roll, begin turn, initial upkeep, which allows you to perform, uh, you know, your orders, drift movement, perform ambush, uh, perform orders. You select a unit that goes to perform actions. Uh, if you choose, you can do something called a slow action or two fast actions, which is a lot like Lancer in the uh, full action and quick actions. Yeah, a lot uh, of tabletop games have been doing that. It's... A really good system. It's simple, elegant. It works. Yeah, I love action points. It's one of the coolest things. Yeah, up, uh, you know, there. it's not even <laughs> exactly action points, but it does kind of. It's a, it's sort of an in between of action points and like Dean. It's kind of actions. True. It's yeah. It's like an adjacent. Yeah. Uh, from there, you your unit performs its action. Once it is performed all available actions, it is considered used, in which case you move on to the next unit. Once all units are used, it goes into your final upkeep, and when your final upkeep ends, the player's turn, the next player's turn begins. Okay. That Yes, I mean all good on that? I'm also I'm also wondering about how like attacks and stuff are made, but I, perhaps that's too nitty gritty. It's a bit in the weeds, yeah. I like I I sort of skimmed over it. Um, I yeah, know, so the way I know it's a dice pool D6 situation. Yes, it is a dice pool D6. The way it basically works is uh, there is an attacker and a defender. If uh, you are the attacker and you have either performed your aim or shoot action, you once you declare you're using that action, you must select a target and you will um, confirm your dice pool. Once you've confirmed your dice pool, you make your uh, attack roll. From there, the defender will check their defense options, their, you know, their armor save, so have you, and they will create their own dice pool, and then you will roll off. If there are more successes on attack than defense, the attack is considered successful. If there are more defense than attacks, the attack is blocked. Now, if the attack goes through and your mobile suit as the defender has uh, armor or a shield, you can choose to use that item or that armor to block the hit, which will destroy that piece, but will stop the damage from going through. If the attack goes through and it deals uh, enough damage to hit that weapon's critical number, that becomes a critical hit. Wait, say that again? So uh, assuming that the, the attack goes through and it hits, uh -huh. yep. you multiply the number of damage you do by the number of successful attacks. If that number exceeds that specific weapon's critical number, it gets critical uh, DC, that will therefore perform a critical hit. So let's say like the RX beam rifle has a, a total crit number of six. Uh -huh. If you successfully hit three attacks, you've done uh -huh. three damage if the beam rifle does three damage. Now that you've hit that six, you have hit the critical number and that attack is now considered a critical hit. How did you hit six? You just said three. Three attacks, two damage each, six damage total. Three attacks, two damage each, you said? Yes. So, yes. Yeah, so okay. if the beam right, like I I said, I, if it does I, two damage, you can roll three different attacks. If all three of them hit, that will it, that will equal the beam rifle's okay. critical hit number. I, I'm pulling these numbers out of my ass. Yeah, no, no, uh, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. The, the logic of sound? Yes, yes. Okay, I think I follow you. I... I I couldn't, I couldn't quite. Yes. Okay. Yes. It makes sense. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. I, the first two times you said it for some reason that made no fucking sense. I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but we got there. We're good. Okay. Math is math. Math is math. Uh, let's see. Fucking oh, math. A, little, a little fun thing for you, Josh. Uh, hmm. So the G Gundam mobile fighters are actually available to play in game. And they have their own special rules. Uh huh. Uh, special rules? Uh, yes. Mobile fighters lack any and all range weaponry. Ignore the fact that a lot of them do have range attacks. It's fine. Uh, I mean, yeah. They get no range weaponry. 
but to counterbalance their lack of the ability to suppressing fire, they are given an extra action they can take in combat and like special unique abilities. Okay, that's cool. So that mobile fighter doesn't have a gun, but he can boost two times and then hit you with the shining finger. And that'll be really fun. Can I just do the what, how which Gundam was it? Was it was it Noble Gundam where she just like twirled the twirled the ribbon and like stopped lasers? Yeah, yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. Just deflect lasers with my weird dancing ribbon thing. The weird the beam ribbon, I think it's called. Yep, yep. Or uh, Rose uh, Gundam's funny cape. Yeah, the rose bits, or you know, yeah. the, the, oh, yeah, the yeah, time yeah. that Master Gundam used an actual. Piece of cloth. Oh, oh, yeah. Bullets. When Master Asia used a literal, yes, yeah, yeah, the literal sash around his waist yes. to deflect, yes, bullets the size of a human being. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. Yeah. G Gundam's wild. <laughs> G Gundam's it's a, a great time. Remember that one time that series. the main character in G Gundam uh, shadow cloned himself, despite the fact that yeah, yeah, it's never been done before, and there was no inclination that the mobile no. suit could do that. Yep. And everyone was like, how the fuck did that even happen? Yep. And he's like, I don't know. I just did it. And then you kind of have to go. And then oh. it doesn't. I don't think it comes up again after that either. Right. It just, just think nope. he did. Nope. He never does it again. He just uh, shadow clone. He just suit. does it. Yeah. Also, yep. you know, destroyed the Eiffel Tower and the Statue of Liberty <laughs> and the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. Casually. Casually. Just, you know, no committing biggie. acts of terrorism, basically. Yeah. yeah. Socks and sandals, baby. No biggie. <laughs> yep. Yep. Hawaiian shirts and bucket hats. Yeah. It's real casual, like. Yeah. OG Gundam. Crazy series. <laughs> Crazy series. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway. I I just think of the the first episode where he's like